Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you building a green wall in the Sahara from coast to coast. The idea was striking in its ambition. African countries aim to plant trees in a nearly 5,000 mile line spanning the entire continent, creating a natural barrier to hold back the Sahara Desert as climate change swept the sands south. The project called the Great Green Wall began in 2007 with a vision for the trees to extend like a belt across the vast Sahel region, from Senegal in the west to Djibouti in the east, by 2030. But as temperatures rose and rainfall diminished, millions of the planted trees died. Efforts to rain in the desert continue in Senegal on a smaller scale. On the western end of the planned wall, Ibrahima Fall walks under the cool shade of dozens of lime trees, watering them with a hose as yellow chicks scurry around his feet. Just beyond the green orchard and a village is a desolate, arid landscape. The citrus crop provides a haven from the heat and sand that surround it. Outside the low village walls, winds whip sand into the air, inviting desertification, a process that wrings the life out of fertile soil and changes it into desert, often because of drought or deforestation. Only 4% of the Great Green Wall's original goal has been met, and an estimated $43 billion would be needed to achieve the rest. With prospects for completing the barrier on time dim, organizers have shifted their focus from planting a wall of trees to trying a mosaic of smaller, more durable projects to stop desertification, including community-based efforts designed to improve lives and help the most vulnerable agriculture. The project that doesn't involve the community is doomed to failure, says Deegan Dea, who is part of a group known as SOS Sahel, which has helped with planning programs in Senegal and other countries across the Sahel, a broad geographic zone between the Sahara in the north and the more temperate African savanna to the south. The programs focus on restoring the environment and reviving economic activity in Sahel villages, Nde said. With the loss of rainfall and the advance of the desert, this strip of the Sahel is a very vulnerable area to climate change, he said. So we should have projects that are likely to rebuild the environment, fix the dunes and also help protect the vegetable growing area. On Senegal's Atlantic coast, Philau trees stretch in a band from Dakar up to the northern city of St. Louis, forming a curtain that protects the beginning of Green Wall region, which also grows more than 80% of Senegal's vegetables. The sky reaching branches tame the winds tearing in from the ocean. This reforestation project started in the 1970s, but many trees were cut down for wood, and work to replant them has been more recent. More trees are also planted in front of dunes near the water in an effort to protect the dunes and keep them from moving. We have had a lot of reforestation programs that today have not yielded much because it is often done with great fanfare and not with good planning, Nde said. The newest projects in Senegal are circular gardens known in the Wolof language as Tolo Kerr. They feature a variety of trees that are planted strategically so that the larger ones protect the more vulnerable. The garden's curving rows hold moringa, sage, papaya and mango trees that are resistant to dry climates. They are planted so their roots grow inward to improve water retention in the plot. It has a global benefit, and people are prepared to make those kinds of long-term investments through their children and their families, which I think is a hallmark of what we need to do in other climate arenas. We moved the vision of the Great Green Wall from one that was impractical to one that was practical, says Mohamed Bakar, lead environmental specialist for Global Environment Facility, to Smithsonian. It is not necessarily a physical wall but rather a mosaic of practices for the use of land that ultimately will meet the expectations of a wall. It has been transformed into a metaphorical thing, he concluded. Recent data about this project show that the adoption of agricultural techniques and practices has already improved production and food security for about 3 million people. By 2020, some 60 million people from sub-Saharan Africa are expected to migrate because of desertification. With the Green Wall, they hope the population from the most affected regions will not need to leave their homes. Batam Bengu, a Senegalese resident of the Koili Alpha village, told The Guardian that her brother risked his life migrating to Europe. I hope he gets to Europe, the people here want to go too, she says. Today, she is one of the benefited individuals of the Great Green Wall, she is part of the 300 women who work in the region. That wraps up the video, I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay notified about our uploads. I'll see you next time, till then peace out.